Thanks for being available, man. I looked at your book last night, man. Congratulations, brother. Congratulations. Like, literally, like, I was reading, like, the first few pages, and I'm like, this guy got so many gems <laughs> in this book. But before we tap into the book and transformation and healing, can you please give the followers and people that's going to see this and listen to this? Yeah. Um. So you, you kind of closed for a second. So I hope this internet thing is, is going to work out. You know, so yeah, we got to trust it's gonna work. Okay. So, yeah. So I was born. I'll give you a little backstory. Um, seven, seven of us, seven kids in the family. Uh, mother is very uneducated. Uh, father uh -huh. asked me when I was about to. So yeah. three, three years old, three or four years old. So I never thought that was a big deal. You know, growing up, people's like, oh, sorry to hear about your dad. It'll be a long time ago or whatever, right? But yeah. we, we got we to gotta understand that everything affects us. Our program, when we are initially programmed from zero to seven, that sends us on a course of life, a certain trajectory, right? And we don't even know why we're on that course, mm. right? Yeah. So growing up, Poverty was one of my programs. Uh, there was no male role model. I didn't know how relationships looked, right? My mom never had a male in the house. It was just us and her and all the relationships, you know, come and go, come and go. So I never had a stable father figure, a stepfather or any time in my life. So I didn't know how that looked, right? So my, yeah. my, my father was dealing in drugs. He was uh, violent. Uh, alcoholic and my mother she had kids by several different men and mm. this is my program and and this is my hard drive so people don't understand a lot of times we go through life why do we always make the same mistakes why do we always have these same experiences why do I always attract the same person in my life why do I attract the same people and it's because it's this frequency that that we're, yeah. we're right this is vibration is bringing yeah. all of Life. And it's our core belief about what we think we deserve. We 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 want something better, but we yeah. think we deserve at the at our core. We think this is what life is supposed to look like. So yeah. me, right, growing up, I'm like I'm gonna do better. So as I was also indoctrinated indoctrinated with religion, so I had dysfunction, addiction, and religion. That's a cold combination, right? Yeah. And and the religion was fear based. So now. I'm going, well, I got to act right or I'm going to go to hell when I finally realized what hell was. As a young kid, I was really bad and I realized what hell was. I don't want to go there, right? So I started to change my ways, but I did it out of fear. Mm. A better kid, like yeah. it was punishment. It's like you touch this, you're going to get your, you know, you're going to get your butt beat, yeah. basically, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fearful thing for me. So I, I, I said, I'm not doing, I'm not stealing no more. I'm not fighting no more. I'm not, you know, I tried to stab my brother when I was six years old. I was, a, I was out of control. Wow. Wow. I, was out, I was out of control, right? So I changed my ways and eventually I really went all the way in as far as religion. Mm. Getting older, right? I was really in there. I was in there. I was trying to tell and When you say religion, what was that religion that you went in on? It, it was just Christian. It was like a Pentecostal, right? right? So. I went so in on religion, I was trying to help other people. I was sold, yeah. right? I was all the way pro programmed. I was programmed. So as I got older and, and I started to become a man, some of the rules in this program, it wasn't, I wasn't feeling it. You can't, you can't have relationships. You can't, you can't, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I'm starting my whole uh, yeah. crazy. Man, I don't know if I can do this rule. I mean, the yeah. other rule, that's okay, but I don't know if I can do this rule. And, and along the way, I was getting a, a fight in a while, but I was basically, I was a good kid. I didn't yeah. hit, my mom had no problems with me. My, my other brothers and sisters, you know, they was on drugs and doing whatever they was doing at the time. But I got to that point and I got so tired of walking on eggshells when it came to religion. Mm -hmm. I was like, if I'm gonna go to hell, I'm gonna go on my own terms. Yeah. So I went from straight and narrow to doing everything. Right, I was selling cocaine. I was I was drinking. I was, I was sleeping with as many women like as I could. I was mm -hmm. living, and I didn't care. And, but still, at the same time, I still had that fear of going to hell. So that fear wasn't gone. It was uh -huh. just it was it was still there. So mm -hmm. I you know 
every once in a while, someone would ask me to go to church with him, and I would go sit in the back, and I'd feel super guilty of being in the back like this. Like, yeah. don't call me, because I'm sending yeah. real nails, right? Don't call me up front. Don't, don't ask for me to stand up or nothing, right? So I still had that fear within me. And then I got to a point where I know you know about trauma and epigenetics and things like that, where you get through your genes. Well, you get to a point where you feel so uncomfortable and you don't know why. So even mm -hmm. out on the yeah, talk about that. Can you can you talk about that? I think that's in, I think that's very important because I think many of us feel very uncomfortable in different situations, and we don't understand why. And we like to project or think it's that person or that thing. It's really within us, but we don't understand what is that thing that's going on that's making us feel so uncertain, so uncomfortable. Can you speak on that a little bit more? Yeah, so I truly believe that we are created from love. We are love. Yes. And what people don't understand is people, especially in, in our community, we look at it as a bad thing. And I'm not talking about a weak thing, I should say. I'm not talking yeah. about love here. Love is the highest frequency that you could tap into. That's who we are, right? So when yeah. we start our way back to self, we become powerful. Ooh, there we go. There we go, <laughs> Mom. Yeah. The closer, the, the more we start coming back to self, we're connecting to that higher self. And you can call it whatever you call it, right? Yeah. It's powerful. So what happens is we receive our program. And our program knows that that's the ego. Right? Whatever our program is, it's the ego. It's not the real self. Right? We're a clean slate when we come in. Mm. We receive Say that, that again. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Say that again. Say that again. We're a clean we slate when we come in. And, and so many of us in, 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 in the black communities, our programs are so dysfunctional. I mean, all the things that we grew up seeing. Think about from zero to seven and what you experienced in your life. What did you yeah. see? What was your program created from? Right? Yeah. So here. Yeah. Fear. Fear. You didn't want to get in trouble. You didn't want to get a HIV disease. You don't want to get uh, girls pregnant too soon. You got to watch your back. Like, I grew up in Baltimore. So the men in my family was kids. Oh, yeah. you, they you sold were like drugs. So I'm always in protect mode. I wasn't in a, I was in a surviving mode and not a thriving mode. I wasn't living out of love. I was living in fear. But thank God for basketball and sports that kept me busy and gave my energy to give to something. But other than that, it was it was fearful growing up, you know, because you ain't know what could happen. And honestly, you know, basketball gave me an identity. So it's like, I could play a little. So it's like, oh, he cool. Like, he hoop. Like, he good. Right, right, right. So that like you said, program. When you, when, I, when you say program, the things that come to my mind is language, right? My mom will always say, money doesn't grow on trees. Or we would say, it's always something. Then it's always something, right? Or that's too expensive. How you gonna get that? You don't know how to, you know, it's just always this, you can't, how, that doesn't make sense, you know. So programming, we gotta reprogram ourselves. And you talk to them as 11 11, by the way. Let's make a wish. Heal and love free. 11 11 right now. <laughs> that's powerful. And I wanna tap into, uh, you got 10 principles for trans transformation in your book. And the first principle, I'm going to read it, and then you can kind of elaborate on it. Love. Love is the most powerful force in the universe. Love converts enemies to friends. Love turns dark to light. Love is the ultimate alchemist. Man, brother, when I read that, I'm like, whoa! <laughs> like, can you elaborate? Like, we was talking about love. Can you go in details about what that means from your perspective? Absolutely. So, the, let me step back just one second. As far as okay. I'm gonna tell you why I'm we feel, I'm gonna tell you why we feel so uncomfortable and why that uncomfortable feeling is urging us to to go deeper. It's urging us to ask the questions: Why am I so uncomfortable? Right? Mm -hmm. And some verse is gonna hit you harder and harder and harder until you wake up and start asking these questions. So we're programmed. We are love we get, receive a program, and that program oftentimes is dysfunctional. And the reason why we feel uncomfortable is because our, our, our true self, the one that knows, the self that knows, knows that that is trying to let you know that this is not you. Mm. And, it's, and it's uncomfortable. 
it's almost like you it's trying to get you to go this isn't you you see how that feels this is not you. Yeah. there's something Ooh. there's something else to this there that you need to go deeper to but oftentimes what we do when we feel uncomfortable is we turn to things to avoid that or suppress these things that are coming up like alcohol like sex like shopping whatever it is we do not want to deal with this uncomfortable feeling so that's why we have even if you get whatever you want right say i'm I, when i get a million dollars i'm going to feel i'm going to have it all i'm going to be good but when you get there you know you're not going to be good i promise you you're not going to be good because what everybody is searching for is happiness what everybody is searching for is fulfillment it doesn't matter some people think they can get it through money some people think they can get it through a career or whatever but when you get there you're going to see the goal it's going to move on you because everything that we need right that happiness that fulfillment that peace is here already so once you turn around and you connect to that then everything you do in your life is going to be fulfilling because you already know this is where it's at it's nowhere out there foundation of self not out there can complete you you are whole and complete right now so we have to understand that so as far as the love what do you want me to speak on as far as that goes? well we, we talked about love coming in before the, you know you broke down um the programming of how we are love we come into this world on a clean slate but we're programmed to believe that that love it's not really us it's something else and if we want to feel it at least where we come from we shouldn't feel it this bad but you talk about love being the most powerful force in the universe and how everything that we want, happiness, success, relationship, stems from love. And a lot of us, including myself, live from a place of fear because I was afraid of the uncertainty that might happen or the bad things that could happen because I wasn't loving myself. I didn't understand the foundation of love or what love was or either, either what, it, what it looked like. So just elaborate on love itself, especially coming from a man, because I think women, they all about it. But as men coming from tough neighborhoods, we like tough love. We don't cry. We don't, you know, we just want to hold everything in. And that damages, damages us even more. You, you know, so I, I've learned to receive love, accept love, and be love. When I'm coming from a loving place, even when I'm mad at someone, I said, you know what? Because we're going to talk about, you talk about in the book, unconditional love, loving without conditions. That when you have compassion and you hold space for people, if someone cuts you off in traffic, if your boy don't pay you back on time or someone say something that goes against what you believe, that's the ego that want to get involved and kind of like have some anger or fear. But I said, you know what? Maybe that person is going through something. Maybe that person has something going on. Maybe they're having a rough day and I hold love and space because that's always, that's not my fight. But if I deal with that person in a loving way, then maybe I'll give you a story. I was at a bar three years ago in LA, uh, EPLP, and it was some, uh, a gang, like a few gang members there, gang members. Like they were from, they were from Crenshaw. And, but I can tell they were drinking. You know, they was intoxicated, but I was getting a drink for someone else. And Buddy flexed on me. So I was like, whoa. I said, oh, I said, look, I don't want no trouble. I said, what's the problem? You good? So the other boy's like, man, my boy, he kind of he kind of wet, man. He lit right now, man. Just I said, man, it's all good. So then my boy came over, and I asked the guy, I said, oh, by the way, man, let me get you a drink. I got him a drink. It was so shocking. After I got this man a drink, he came to me. Even though he was a little intoxicated, he came to me. He gave me a five, and when he gave me a five, he, like, pulled me in for a hug. I'm like, thank you, man. I really appreciate it. Because I didn't map, map his energy of that intensity of, like, what's up? I want some smoke. I came humble. I came in a loving place. Like, oh, <laughs> Like, we just out here trying to have a good time. You know, he said what he said. I acknowledged it. And then I said, man, can I get you a drink? And it dissipated the, the whole, the energy of what he was trying to bring. So it was just one of those days that i never forget because this is a brother that I'm talking to. And he was willing to go there quick. But see, I come from that environment. So it's like, I know how to deal with people in that space because I'm not that. Cause I don't want no smoke, <laughs> right? But I know right, how right. to handle people that, in that frequency because it's all love. And so, talking about love, love, fear, 
like I said, I just think love trumps everything. And in that moment, it was a loving moment for me and also for me to look at him different. Because he came and gave me a hug, like, brother, I appreciate it. So he actually gave me a lesson in the blessing, if that makes sense. So that's absolutely. Yeah, Here, here's the so. thing. Here's the thing about it. You said earlier self love, and and the, the thing about it is it's so hard. It's the hardest thing to do, especially if you've done some things that you're not proud of in your life, right? Yeah. Only you know all the things that you have done and all the people you have hurt and the things the things that you really wish you hadn't done. So, and then you start to wake up. Now, when you start to wake yeah. up, you can't believe that you've done these things. You how mm -hmm. have, have been so unconscious to do these things, and you don't, um, it's hard to forgive yourself, right? It's hard to forgive yourself. But just like you would forgive a friend, say, look, that's where you were at that time. You have to forgive yourself. And you have, and the biggest thing I, I, I didn't talk about meditation, but the biggest thing that, I, that happened to me during meditation was, I started to learn to love myself. And when you start to learn to love yourself, your whole life is going to be an example of that. Your whole life, everything you do is going to be a loving place, no matter what, because now you have connected. You have aligned. You have shed that old self, and what's left is that love. So your career might change. And just because you raise your frequency so high, the old cast you used to hang out with, just seem to fade away. You don't even have to yeah. tell them no. You, it, it's, it's possible for them to stay. They, they can't stay there, yeah. right? And, and the crazy part about it is there was a gap between my old friends and the people I'm with now. And that gap, we got to be super aware that we don't need to reach back because we're lonely, right? We don't don't reach back because you haven't seen somebody mm -hmm. in a while. Hold on, hold on. Okay to let go hold on, hold on. Say that again. Years. You don't have to. Say that okay. again. You feel that. I said, I said, say that again because it's so many people that I've been attracting lately that's on a journey of spiritual uh, awakening and growing and evolving, and they're lonely. And they're, they're letting friends go and they're losing friends and it's uncomfortable. They don't know what to do. They're having, you know, nervous breakdowns. But I like, like you said, it's like, don't reach back. I've been at that. that before where I wanted to reach back and I see what I know what this person is doing and what they're up to but there's no life there anymore that's just me trying to reminisce of what was so check but it's not that you know so check it out I got I got some some for people that are in this place right yeah if you just work on yourself during these times right just work on yourself during these times I promise you what's going on is Everything is getting switched out for you. Your tribe is being summoned, right? Yeah. As you work, you elevate your frequency, your tribe is forming. They're coming for you, right? And if you stay, stay, stay in, that, in your lane and don't reach back, a new group of people is going to reach out, and you're going to go there. And when they do, you're going to understand why you had to be lonely for a second. You wasn't ready for the new tribe yet. You were in this in-between state. You got to, man, when my new tribe came to me, everybody, they were light workers, they were healers, they were people trying to do amazing things on the planet, right? And all I had to do was just stay in my lane and continue this healing work. And then it will come. I promise you, it will come. You don't need to go backwards. You know, don't need to hit the club just because you're fine. You, hey, you have everyone you need within you. You don't need anybody, Absolutely. right? But Right people will come when you're ready. So keep doing that work. And that's crazy because for you and I, I met you, what, three days ago? <laughs> Literally through a family member who you guys chatted. He, you know, he purchased your book. And boom, we hit it right off. I'm like, oh, buddy, that's been. I was like, man, he's been through some things. He knows some things. And, you know, what stood out to me in the book, you use an analogy or metaphor. You said living in the basement, <laughs> right? <laughs> living in the basement, that, uh, that low vibration frequency. And um, can you elaborate on that term, living in the basement? Oh, yeah. I, that to you? I was there. So, Say it again. Can you hear me? You kind of broke up a little bit. Yeah, you I said I too. didn't hear 
last yeah. thing you said, you kind of broke up a little bit. I said, I said, can you elaborate on that uh, terminology, on that statement, that that uh, that phrase, living in the oh. basement, and how you got to that? Yes, yes, absolutely. So, like I said, we all are on a frequency. We all are vibratory, right? Everybody, everything is vibing, right? And when you're at a very low frequency, you you only have a certain amount of uh, uh, choices, right? Mm. Your choices. No, hold on. You get to choose from a bunch of dysfunction. Yeah. <laughs> so, right? So, say I'm in the gutter. I'm going to have gutter experiences. My friends are going to mm. be in the gutter. My relationship is mm. going to be gutter. The mm. my living is going to be gutter. It's all going to be there. You can't live in that place and expect to have this amazing life with all these amazing people because you are not there. You are not ready. So every time you elevate yourself, you get a new set of choices. The more you elevate yourself, the more amazing the people that come into your life are going to be. It's law of attraction. It cannot be otherwise. The, what is going on inside of you is going to attract whatever you have in your life at the time. And we have to take full right. responsibility. So that basement living is the drug dealing that I was doing, the, the alcoholism, the dysfunctional relationships. All these different things, these were all basement experiences. And everybody lives right. there at some point in their life. It, it doesn't have to be long, but I, was, I, I, I had the extended stay. I was there for like 20 plus years, right? So let me backtrack a little bit. And the reason why I even started, I always, I, we have always been on a journey, a spiritual journey, but some of us don't know. So... After 20-something years of partying and doing whatever I was doing, and it looks like you're breaking up a little bit. I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you, though. Keep so talking. It's fine. See if you come back on. I'm back. back. I'm back. Yeah, you're back. You're back. You're back. You're back. Okay. So, anyways, yeah. Okay. So, we're all, we're all on this journey, but some of us don't know we are on this journey. So... During my life, I was having all these crazy experiences. I blew out my knee, and then my appendix went out what? in the same month. And I'm still an alcoholic yeah. at this time, right? I started having anxiety attacks. Um, I, I was in the middle. I was downtown Oakland on some crutches. I had been smoking weed and drinking. I felt face unconscious. Just crazy stuff started happening to me. And I was, I was really the victim at this time. So in my late 30s, I go to Miami to, to party. And I yeah. get up in the morning, I'm peeing blood. Now, this Ooh. is the last thing that I needed in my life. I did not need this in my life. I was already anxious. I was already depressed. I didn't know what to do. So the rest of the time in Miami, I didn't drink. But I, when I got back to the Bay Area, I continued to drink. And this was when I realized I was an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. Right? When I realized I was an alcoholic, I'm like, man, I'm either going to have to check in or check out because I just had my last baby. And I, I was literally killing myself. I mean, I had blood. I, I ain't gonna get into it, man. But it was it was crazy. So I didn't know what to do. I tried religion already. I tried the streets already. I said, "Well, I heard about meditating and tried that." And I just looked it up and I started sitting. And I started sitting every single day. Um, and it's, I, I I remained sober, but I was still having to deal now without my crutch. Yeah. I had to deal without my crutch now. That was my crutch. It made me feel okay. So I was angry. I felt like, why me? You know, this is the only thing that I ever thought made me feel okay in life. I started questioning, what is it all about? I'm in my 30s. I don't know what to, I have no idea what life is about. And as I continue to sit, what I realize now is I was connecting. And the thing about the word God, I used to have a, a hard time saying it because it's just a word. Uh, there's, a, there's a philosopher, uh, his name is Alan Watts. He said, you can't yeah. get wet from the word water. You can't get wet from the word water, right? That means the word water means nothing. It doesn't mean it, that's actually, it doesn't matter what you call God. It doesn't change whatever that is, is all I'm saying. But so when I was sitting down, I was connecting to something higher. And I didn't really know what that was. And what happened was as I continued to sit, I stayed sober and I started to feel different. Like things started to, I started to look at people uh, on the street and wanted to help them. 
I'm like, this is strange. I was, I was, I was cultivating within myself. And I'm like, I've never felt like this. Like I started to see me and everybody, right? Because I see that the, the dope fiend, I see the alcoholic, I see the homeless person as myself. I'm starting to make a connection here. We're all connected. We're all connected at the deepest mm -hmm. level. And it, di it didn't matter who that was. Yeah. And I also started to realize that I was, I was the genius, right? I was, I was greatness as well. I started to think about myself like, yeah, I'm a pretty dope human being as well. You know what I'm saying? I'm intelligent too. I never thought I was intelligent. Ooh, okay. You kind of stuck. I can hear you. I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. Are you are, can you hear me? Okay. So yeah. So um, I started realizing there's a there's a, an intelligent an intelligence that we can we can tap into that has nothing right. to do with books, nothing to do with good grades, right? It's there and it's available for everybody. So yeah, right. So meditation, even on a physical level grows your brain it grows your it literally makes you smarter right and it reprograms you yeah. just being in stillness just being still and being present starts as good programming so what was, what was yeah. it was layers though it was layers of, of of letting go of certain things it was layers of letting go of programming so i would it was i would start to level two I, this would go. This was go. I would start to realize that that people that have these certain beliefs, it's not really their beliefs; it's their programs. So I started to not take things yeah. personal. I understand that it's acting unconsciously, and if you just go back, it's so simple now. It seems so easy to to con that concept is if you go back to childhood and this baby. It, it's a, it's a, just yeah. consciousness and love. And then we get somebody and whoever that is, gives it a, a belief system. Give it a name. You didn't yeah. even know you were black till someone told you. Yes. Gives the baby a name. Gives the baby a belief, a religion. N now it's easy to go, okay, that's a program. That's some matrix yeah. type stuff right there, right? So, so and most of us live with that program our entire lives. We will fight and die behind the program. So now I understand, even though we have shared experiences because of the way we look, I understand that those experiences yeah. aren't really real. It's 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 a it's society yes. that made this these rules, and we are so much greater yes. than a skin color. We are so much more powerful yeah. than a skin color. Anything that any program that we were given, we are so much more powerful than it. The thing about it is now I can move and, 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 and be a part of the social justice movement or whatever movement I'm part of. I can do it from a different place. I can do it from a, I don't have to be involved with anger yeah. and hatred. Yeah. And I that's what they want us to do. Most I understand where these people, how they got to where they got to. Yeah. And it's, and it's information and information is energy. Information changes situation. Um, Meditating is powerful. And like you said meditation reprograms the brain. It gives us new eyes, new perspective, new thinking, new feeling. We start attracting new things all by being still. There's a book by uh, At Heart Tolle, Stillness Speaks. In the Bible, I don't know what uh, scripture is, but it said, peace be still, you know, and know I'm God. But when we take our time and we're patient and we're in a meditative state, we do everything better. We think better, we look better, we feel better, we cook better, we have love better. We take our time. But everyone's in this, this rat race, this matrix of I gotta do this, I gotta do that. I even have to check in with myself and say, E, slow down, <laughs> relax. It's all right, man. Take your time. We all right, we here. Because a lot of, lot of us is, are going Fast yes, and, sir. and what I've learned is that direction is better than speed. And I think that's the benefit of meditation. That's the benefit of understanding love. That's the benefit of not living in fear and getting over it through love. Um, can you, can you talk about, uh, 
Well, you talked a lot about love and programming, and we didn't really touch on fear, but fear was in there. We, we lived in a fearful place based on our program. But how, how did you, because I think in the book you said at 38, when you went to Miami, you was, you was peeing blood, um, you had a transformation, you just, you know, you said you woke up feeling better, you saw everybody yourself. Um, what was that aha moment or what was that turning point or that epiphany you say, you know what, I got to change my damn life. You know, was it Miami? Was it getting back from Miami? Was it just like you found your purpose? Because when I look at this book, you know, by the way, people go get this on Amazon, like Love Over Fear. And I look at you, I'm like, yeah, buddy's been here before. He knows exactly what's going on. And, and, and you're so certain in who you are and what you know. And I think as men, especially brothers, we, we think we got to look a certain way. We got to have certain things. Um, we have to be a part of certain people's lives or associations to have love over fear, to be spiritual, to be tapped in, to be, you know, the feminine and the masculine, the divine, right? To have divine intelligence, to have divine guidance. And I think you are a true testament of, look, brother, I've been there. I've done that. That doesn't work. But I know this works and let me help you make it work. And I think... Uh, for, some, for someone like you reaching back and helping people, even putting out a book, you're also a public speaker and a transformational coach. And I think you're, you're, you're plant based, right? You're vegan. Correct? Man, he probably can't hear me. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. So, mm -hmm. what got you into not only like getting out of all the, the madness and chaos into the truth and to find love, which shifted your paradigm to change your diet? Or have you always been vegan? Because I think that's big, too, in like who we are. No, I, I have not. Say it again. I'm sorry. Yeah, so, yeah. So, you ain't going to believe this, this part. Um, so, my transformation came in layers. Okay. It wasn't just an overnight thing. I'm still, still, I'm still standing. Every day, I sit every single day, uh, no pun intended, religiously, every single day, right? Um, and three years into my meditation, I went to eat breakfast and I ordered a veggie omelet because nothing, no meat sounded good. And the person across from me said, are you a vegetarian? I was like, yep. I didn't even oh, know what wow. I said. From that day forward, that was eight years ago, I've never eaten meat. So I had to do some research on this. Why did I, why did I say yes? And the, and the cold part about it is I knew I wasn't going to eat meat again. I knew it. So I started researching. As soon as I got up off the table, I'm like, why did I say that? And I know I'm not going to eat it no more. My wife thought I was crazy when I came home. I said, I ain't eating meat no more. So what it said was I had made a connection, not just beyond the human species. Just like we feel it's okay to, 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 for people to experience violence. Like we, if it's a dog, we go to prison. If it's a pig, we have a barbecue. Wow. You Man. see what I'm saying? You see how that works? If it's a, if it's a black shot in the street, black, black. he deserved it. And if it's someone else, uh, it, yeah. it was horrible. You see what I'm saying? So we have to understand that all the forms that people take, suffering is, is experienced by everybody and every being that has ability to suffer. Right? So what's so different between a dog, which people would be out of their minds if someone's beating the dog on the side of the road, what is the difference between, I was making a connection beyond the human species. I had already made a connection who I really didn't, really didn't even think about before. And now it even went further, right? So, and then when I started doing research, I was like, yeah, man, just like the animal agriculture, I'm like, I, I can't be a part of this. This is crazy. I don't know if you know this or but you know what they do with the, the like in when I find out found out about the egg uh, industry in the in the in the milk industry, I'm like, this is e even crazier. Like they literally grind up male chicks in the egg industry because there's no wow. use to them for them. Oh wow! They can't lay eggs. They grind them up alive. Wow! Like, whoa! Like it, yeah, it's, I mean it's it's insane. So I made that connection to all life. And I, and I realized that everything is energy, right? Everything is energy. And the energy of those animals at death is, is, is fear, mm. it's anxiety. 
wow. is stress. And, and we are taking this yeah. into our bodies. Into our bodies and down. We're breaking it down. Now this becomes us. You literally are yeah. what you eat, right? So this energy you're taking in, these animals are treated a certain way and you're taking it all in and it's becoming part of you at a cellular level. And I'm like, that's crazy. I know a few vegans that stop having anxiety wow. attacks when they stop eating meat. We got to understand we are, we are energetic beings. So because I know a lot of people who have those, right? You can you can eat life, or you can eat. I know a lot of people who have anxiety panic attacks. Like that's that? like big, big. I, I do some work in a in the mental health space, and I know a lot of people that I'm close to and directly that are always anxious and have anxiety attacks. And they say it freaks them the fuck out. They don't know what to do. It's scary. They're uncomfortable. Um, and I'm trying to like myself, like, I'm like, I'm attracting these people. I'm like, how do I help them heal and get over it? And, you know, you know, from my understanding, it's, it's based in fear and worry. But like you said, that goes to a whole other level when it comes to food and what you're eating and the energy you're taking in every day and the thoughts you're and the perspective and narrative you're creating in your mind, your internal representation. So that's, I never looked at food as being a part of someone having depression having anxiety attacks that's that's deep How, so have you experienced any anxiety in your life oh yeah yeah when i was going through that i i i've got i went to, i went to the ambulance one time because i thought i was dying so when i had hurt my knee and then my appendix went out i was full of anxiety i fell on my face i chipped my tooth all that stuff so um we understand that that People give off certain vibes. We we've been around people where we just don't feel right around them, right? We we when someone's giving off a negative energy and you can feel it, right? Just something ain't right. I can't be around this person because there's the energy they give off. We understand that. So why don't you why do you think that what you put in your body, why do you think that doesn't have an effect mm -hmm. on you? That energy. And this, 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 I had a vegan shirt on and this, and this dude came through and said, like, you're vegan? I said, say, I said, yeah, of course. And uh, he goes, well, we started talking about the energy part. And he said, he used to be a hunter. And he said, when, he, when you shoot a deer, if you don't kill it right away, if it runs for a while, wow. the meat spoils because of the fear that runs through. Wow. Damn. That's how, that's how fast energy can change. Right? That's how fast it can change. And then when you got these animals that are locked up and stressed out their whole lives, what kind of energy do you think that they're giving off? So I didn't do it because of that. I learned all this stuff after the fact. I just made that connection to life and I did not want to, I said to myself, I don't want to stop any more heartbeats. I don't care if they're human or animal heartbeats. I'm not a killer. I couldn't kill it on my own. If you gave me a pig and said, here, you want some bacon? Go ahead and kill this animal. I wouldn't. So obviously, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, well, if I can't do it, I, I must really think something yeah. wrong with it at the deepest yeah. level, right? If, if I were to take a pig, right? Pigs are legal. They, you can kill pigs, right? It's legal, right? But if I was to take a pig and take it out in a public place and kill this pig, everybody would be horrified. Their kids yeah. would be horrified. They'd be traumatized. But now, bacon, you don't know how that got there. It got there the same exact way, right? See, we're so disconnected, and we don't understand how violent this whole industry is. We don't understand, and we don't want to see the videos. Yeah. We don't want nothing to do with it. Out of sight, out of mind. We're living our program. We were given this as kids, and we just look at it as, as food. There's no harm done. But there's harm done to the planet. There's harm done to yourself. There's harm done to them. We got to understand how much harm it's really creating, right? I'm, and it blows my mind now because I'm in a different place. I can look at it and go, how did I ever yeah. not know? Right? How did I and ever it's, not it's know? It's trippy because... Yeah. If you ask any child, if you, if you ask, ask any kid, right? I'm listening. I'm listening. Go ahead. I'm listening. No, I'm listening. You said if you ask any kid. Oh, 
Okay, if you ask any kid, like if you really tell them what they're eating, they won't Ooh, eat. Ooh, my nephew's like that. He certain things he just won't eat. They won't eat it. And he like I don't want. It. If you say this is a actual chicken, they won't eat it. What happens is when you get to the point where you yeah. know what it is, you're already disconnected. Chicken food, it doesn't mean a being, yeah. right? It doesn't mean an animal. So I didn't look for veganism. I didn't look to become plant-based at all. I was connected to that higher yeah. state, that higher self. I was connected. And when you do that, you get your GPS is activated. And like you said, it's not, not how fast you move. It's the direction you move in. So when your GPS is activated, you move different. So everything starts yeah. to change. The decision making becomes highest decision making you can have, and so your life changes in a direction. Right? It changes from from being selfish to selfless, and and and, and your diet reflects love, and your your actions reflect reflect love, and everything in your life starts to reflect this being, which this is what you are. So the, the closest you are, the closer you are to self, the the more that love is expressed yeah. as your and, and that and that. And that, and that as your life, every time you step out of the house, you have an opportunity to share this with other people. And I'm not talking about speaking, I'm talking about your like your energy, your aura. Patience, that's all. You there? Yeah, yeah, you back. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's Yes, sir. Because me on my spiritual journey, um, a lot of revelations, you know, I get and come up and like what food I'm eating, if I should get, go to bed on time and like little things. It don't be big. It'd be like, ah, oh, you need to get up at five o'clock every morning for 30 days or you need to stop eating meat. Uh, you need to pray. It, it, it's, I mean, your spirit talks to you, you know, like when you tap in with yourself. It'll tell you exactly what you need to do and how you need to do it. Or you can ask it uh, an empowering question. Like, how do I add value today? How do I show up in the world today? And it'll say something like teach or live or move your body. It's something very subtle, but it's meaningful for that moment. So I challenge people to, because I think the world is waking up. So people want to wake up. They want to know more. They are curious about love over fear. They do want to heal. Some people do want to be vegan and go plant. They just don't understand it. They, they, they're too afraid to make adjustments because they don't think their body or their image is going to be thing. So people are waking up and they're like, where are the answers? And, you know, it's guys like yourself that have this book out and everything else you do um, to give people the information, the insight, and share your experiences to let them know that this is how I got there because I've never heard a story about a person going vegan or plant-based like that before. It's like it found you. You wasn't looking for it, but it's like your spirit called it to come so you can get the answers, the information, the understanding, so you can give it to make it make sense to have a person feel okay. <laughs> that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no question about the way you break it down. It's like you're exactly. You're eating energy. You're eating an animal. Animal is energy. So however that <laughs> animal is slaughtered, it's going in your spirit and you become it. But I think what you said about most people, and I say most, some people you know, when they got off of meat, they stopped having anxiety attacks. I think that's crucial. I think that's big. And I think food plays a very important role in our lives, but we just don't think about it that way because it's food. We eat it. But I've noticed in times, like, if I eat meat or something, my digestive tract is off. I feel uncomfortable. I just, I don't feel right. But when I'm not eating it, I feel light. I feel free. I'm like, damn. So your body tells you everything, but we got to process and wake up to what we say, what we do, and how we feel, and, of course, the food we put in our body. And I always tell people, I don't want no one to be perfect. I don't want people to be themselves. I want them to be authentic. But we have to understand, who am I? Who, who, who is this authentic being that I'm trying to uh, become? What does it look like? What does it feel like? So one of my questions that I have for you was, what does healing look like in the flesh? From a physical, like what? 
Well, Go ahead. it looks so. It, it looks it 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 looks different for everybody, I'm sure. But for me, because there's so much stuff I repressed and suppressed that uh, when it came when it started to come up. Um, all these energies start to release, right? And and it looks yeah. like I said before, it's in stages. You 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 level up, and then you think, okay, I'm good, and then and then you level up, and you think I'm good, and all the layers of the onion starts to be peeled. And a lot of times, emotionally, you go through a lot of a lot. I don't know if you ever heard of dark heard of soul. I mean, you go through a lot of emotional stuff. All this stuff. All this stuff is trying to be processed and it's oh, yeah, yeah. very scary and like physical yeah, things start to happen to you and you think you're you're gonna die and just crazy stuff starts happening to you and you don't know what it is and then you got to start researching like what is yeah. going spiritual warfare you know it's real man right you have moments of like euphoria yeah and then you have these yeah deep, say that dark yeah and it's intense it's like what what is this? Yes. And then when it first happened to me, I was unsure yeah. and uncomfortable. You don't know what's happening. Yeah, like, what the fuck is this? And then as I grew, I just got more confident and comfortable in that space. I'm like, oh, I know what's going on. I just ain't nothing. I, I know how to deal with this. Be still for, for an hour. Just shut everything off. Shut down. Just relax. Meditate. Don't eat. Like sometimes I would fast for an entire day. No food, just water. Just to re- Replenish, because what people don't know, this is what I discovered in my journey. When we eat food, we're actually covering up, covering up our spirit and our soul, because food is energy, right? It's a vibration. So the more you're eating, right, you're putting in your body, you're covering up your spirit, so you can't even get to your highest, purest thoughts, because you got all that energy going in. So that's why it's important to fast, so you can be more clear, more open. You can open that third eye. And you can be more aware of what's going on and you can make better decisions and you can be more aligned with your life and what you're trying to do. But a lot of us emotionally eat. We eat our pain away. We eat our trauma away. And then it just takes us further and further down the frequency and we can't get to our highest self or truth because we, we might pray, we might work out, we might do all these great things, but the food we're eating is not the best. And that's stopping us from accomplishing or getting to that level uh, that we know we should be spiritually. So, yeah, man, food is important. Now that I'm understanding, like, honestly, this is the first time in my life that I really understand when you say you are what you eat. The way you broke it down gave me a different perspective than I had before. Because, honestly, it's obvious. Like, of course, you are what you eat. But the way you you you, you broke it down, it makes, like, damn, that that's true. So I think... That's going to start the healing process for a lot of people is taking a lot of things out of their diet, thinking about what they eat on a consistent basis and how food makes them feel and how they are without food. That's a reaction that that dark night of the soul, when you don't eat for, you know, don't give a dog his bone. Oh, he's angry. And how do you deal with that anger when you don't get food? How do you deal with the, you know what I'm saying? Like you got to sit in that pain. You got to sit in that dark space to understand it so it doesn't control you. You control it. So, yeah, man. It's powerful. So, look, I, I got to go soon, but I got I yeah. got one more question. Yes. But before we get out of here, I just want you to, um, if there, for people to find you, of course, your, your, your uh, Instagram handle uh, is available, and I'm going to put this video up on my page. But what else do you have going on? Um, where can people find you? What are you are doing now that you want people to see you for? Like, I know you got the book out. There's a book. I just got it. It came yesterday. Great book, people. Go get it. But anything else you might be got going on, a pearl brand, I don't know, nutrition, speaking engagement, I think you need to be heard, seen, and felt in this world, this new world that we're in. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely am open to speaking engagements. And, and, you know, when it opens back up, yeah. I can't wait to show up in person. You know, bring my book, show up in person, really connect with people yeah. on that level. I miss that. But I have a website. It's monkeyworld.com. And, you know, I'm in, currently oh, writing my second that's big. book. I'm in the process of that. And I'm, my coaching entails helping you to see what you already know. Helping you to live 
your best life, right? To dig deeper, to ask yourself those questions that you don't ask yourself. If we ask ourselves, and we're really honest about it, what is it about? We're going to get the answers. Like we may not like what the answers, about? <laughs> but we're going to get the answers, right? What is right? Why am I here? You know, ask yourself those questions you never asked yourself. Why do I, why do I act like this? What do I need to heal from? And you're going to get those answers. So I, what I do is I push people to that space, being uncomfortable. we got to be uncomfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah. And a lot of times you don't do it on your own. It takes a push, right? So living, living from a fearful place, just like if you were, you, have you ever seen those videos where people get ready to jump off a rock and then they yeah. hesitate and they just tumble down the rock? We gotta make, we gotta make sure that we go all in. We can't, we can't hesitate. We, we can't do that. We can't, because a deer in the headlights can't make a move one way or the yeah. other. And it's gonna get ran over. We have to understand, we gotta jump through fear. We have to understand it's not solid. And sometimes it just takes someone else to yes. say, you can do it. Support. Jump off that cliff. Go all the way in. And that's what I'm here to yeah, help. Yeah, man. So thank you. Uh, my last question for you is, if this was your last day on earth, what would be your meal? And what message or quote would you leave with the universe and the planet? If this was your last day on earth. What would be the yeah, meal? Yeah, what would be the meal? What would you eat? And what would be your message or advice or quote that you would from. leave with people? You get the second question? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can hear you. Me. Can you hear me? Okay. What would be the so meal? Said, what would be, and the what meal? Would be your message or advice you would give the world from your perspective? Oh, you. You had, like, no, someone room. look. Someone, someone asked a question to me yesterday. I was like, "Yo, this is deep." So, but I my like message it it forced me to think. Like, damn, what would be my last meal? You know what I'm saying? Right. So, so my message is love. Circulate. Love currency. I like that. Love is currency. Okay. Circulate love. That's what we are. So that's my message, right? Circulate it. Give it, and you, as you give, you receive. And the meal, uh, I'll, what would the meal be? Um, it, <laughs> it had to be some junk food. There we go, baby. Vegan junk food or something. Beyond, I mean, that's what I said. I, said a, I, I told the person, I said, I would have banana pudding, some gummy bears. <laughs> I got to have me some salmon or spurs. Right. And I, I might want a steak. I don't know, but it got to be some junk food real right. <laughs> Yeah, right. man. I mean, that, well, that's what life is about, man. Being real, being authentic in the moment, and just being our true selves, man, through a loving uh, soul and place, man. By the way, have you saw, have you seen uh, The Soul movie? With Jamie Foxx? The movie The Soul? Did you watch that? Uh -huh. Oh, that, yeah. yeah. That was a good movie. Yeah. That, I learned a lot mm -hmm. of uh, lessons in that, man. and uh, It was phenomenal. But yeah, Monk. Yes, sir. Hey guys, you got it. Monk Coleman here. Coleman here. Thank you again, brother, for your energy, your time. I know we had some technical difficulties, but we got through it. That's life, right? We're gonna have things that come our way. It's how we respond, right? So having patience, standing solid in our pursuit and being meditative and you know, genuine. But like I said, love over fear, guys. The book is out. Go get it. It's on Amazon. Follow him. Um, I'll put this up on my page and uh, you guys can check it out. Uh, much love, love, I love over fear, fear, healing and transformation. And I see you in the universe soon. We'll talk, we'll keep in touch. If you need anything from me, I'm here, brother. It's all love. We're part of the tribe now. We're all one. <laughs> be great, be safe, peace and love. All right, take care. Oh my God. That was a great interview. Thank you, people who kind of supported with the badges. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I will put this up. And uh, I got to go. I got to take a call. But uh, you guys be great. Peace and love.